What's up everybody, Liam Klitschrom here for another awesome Redshift tutorial. This week's tutorial comes in from Andre Fry. He emailed me asking to do a tutorial on hair and I realized I hadn't yet, so here it is. It's a really short video, it's pretty easy. If you know how to do hair in physical and standard renderer inside Cinema 4D, then you pretty much know how to take care of it inside of Redshift. So let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> So if you've ever worked with hair inside of Cinema 4D, it's really simple to get started. Just to tell you what the scene's got going on, I've got a dome light here, I've got a platonic, and a floor. So if you want to add hair to anything, you just go to simulate hair objects, add hair, and like that magic, we've got hair in our scene. Now you can come over here and start tweaking it to whatever levels you want. Um, come in here with your guides, so right now we have 12 and that's to match the 12 vertices in here, and then 5,000 hairs, and over in here we have dynamics enabled. I'm going to turn that off just for this tutorial, make sure we've got nothing else going on, and so that's pretty good just to start with. You'll see we've got this material here, and the scene's picking up the hair material. If I come in here, we've got some white specular, which is causing these whites in here, and then we've got this kind of black-brown range. And it's doing an okay job. Uh, to be a little bit more efficient and it reads a little bit better, I recommend creating a redshift hair material. And if we put that right here on the hair, it'll update and you'll see nothing really happens. And that kind of throws people off a little bit. So let's go ahead and go on our shader graph and see what's happening. So in the shader graph, you'll see that everything in the hair is being driven by this C4D hair material here. So we can actually update everything right in here just like you would with standard or physical renderer. So if I want to have some kind of crazy purple or green hair, um, let's just color it right here. So I'm going to do like a purple base. Let me select the base, purple base there, and then maybe like some green tips here. And you can see there's some purple down there and it goes to green, but because of the specular, it's got this white into it. So maybe you'll add just a little bit of pink in there too for the specular and get some little bit of gradient pink in there. And um, what else can we do? It's just like working with normal hair in some authority. So um, maybe something with like the curve with thickness here. Let's see about kind of having it thin out a little bit. So you can see it kind of starts thick at the root and gets really thin. I think that's probably too thin something like that. Maybe the root we can kind of have like five centimeters, like a really thick root. And then the tip, we'll, we'll probably leave that the same, maybe maybe half a centimeter, something like that. And some stuff that I really like to play with is like frizz and kink and scale. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on frizz and you'll see it, it updates now that it's enabled. Maybe not so much, maybe like 15% there, but we can have a variation of maybe like 30%. So, uh, not so much overall, but there's a lot of variety to it. And maybe bring this down just a bit, probably 65%. And we can kink it up a little bit so it gets kind of kinked and clumpy and, and all tangled in there. I kind of like how that is at the moment. And then what else can we do? Uh, we can start to add some density in there. And I think I'm going to just use a crazy noise map. How about something like, uh, we'll do electric, so it gets kind of fun in there. And maybe 200, oh, it doesn't let me go above. We'll do like 50% then, about halfway. So now it's starting to get kind of like bald spots in there, um, just from how the density is clamped with these black spots. So I might generate a little bit more hair, maybe something along the lines of like 25,000. There we go. Nice and clumpy, kind of tangled. So I'm not really sold on how this is looking with the white. I'm going to come back in, maybe add some green in there. And that gets to be a little too much. Maybe pull back the strength, something like that. 20%. Sharpness, we can probably do like 20 as well. 
and you can see everything that you want to do can be updated in here and if we come into our hair material and take a look there's really not much to do so like the diffuse you can have you can add some translucency to it if you want see it kind of lightens up in the back there to let some light through transmission length of gloss glossiness the width of glossiness um, just some real minor things to update so if you want to have your IOR of the hair be a little bit um, different than the the standard settings in here then we can update that so maybe like 1.45 instead and samples how about we go up to like 256 just to make sure they're nice and clean and I think that's pretty much it even the samples up here we can go up a little bit higher and then if we do a bucket render it's gonna render really fast you can see it's already going around the scene I've only got two cards in here at the moment so it's just doing two buckets so I'm gonna turn this back off and what else can we do um, if you want to throw dynamics on it's just like working with it in standard or physical renderer so hit enable I'm gonna hit pause on this and then if I hit play you'll see those hairs fall down and re-enable this and then everything gets activated again all right everybody that's it for this week's tutorial if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me like Andre did it really helps me drive content and tutorials for you guys you can also leave a comment below you can find me on social media I'm at 531 pretty much everywhere or as I build this community we do Redshift live every Thursday it's at 9 p.m. Eastern time you can come in hang out ask questions and watch me screw stuff up in Redshift watch me break down stuff and tell you how I built X Y and Z or just kinda hang around and laugh as I make up stuff uh, on the spot so anyway again you can find me anywhere on social media at 531 you can email me or leave comments below and it helps really drive the tutorials you guys wanna see alright guys thanks so much and I'll talk to you soon Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Prograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in the HDR studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny, all right. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. The podcast and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials.
pretty good, I guess. 